in good shape. Your weekly dose of health information on Deutsche Welle. Find out more about what's new in medical treatment, alternative medicine, as well as nutrition, wellness, and beauty. Medical professionals, therapists, and counselors are in our studio to offer their expert advice on in good shape. And I'm now joined in the studio by Dr. Dieter Kunz. He's a somnologist an expert for sleeping and sleeping disorders. Hello and welcome to the show. Hi. Chronic lack of sleep seems to be quite dangerous, as we saw in the report. Um, so, uh, like heart attack, diabetes, depression, why is that? Well, the mechanisms behind are not well known until now, but over the last 12 months, a couple of reports came in that are quite, uh, quite informative. One of them is an old hypothesis that would just get rid of all the toxins that develop during the day, that is really diluted during the night, that is one. And second, uh, there's a study shown that on the molecular mechanism, gene expression is changed in about one third of all the genes even if you have just a shortage of sleep from eight to six hours, just over a couple of days. So we start to find the mechanisms that are behind, and they're quite dramatic. So it doesn't take a long time for me to not get enough sleep and really get ill? Well, whether we get ill that fast, we do not know, but we can see the changes. Mm -hmm. So even short-term sleep restriction um, leads to these changes. Whether that actually leads to disorder then and how long that takes, we do not know. But short-term sleep restriction um, happens nearly every day. I mean, I'm a father, I've got two kids, so I'm restricted in my sleep pattern a lot of times. Can I catch up with my sleep? So getting a nap next day? Well, we do not know that as well. Whoever is awoken by the alarm clock most obviously didn't get enough sleep and most of us do not have this short-term sleep restriction. Well, we're doing that for 10 or 20 years, um, sleep restriction for two or three hours. And that seems to really um, change your health. Um, but how, uh, whether we can catch up a short-term sleep uh, restriction, we do not know. Okay. Um, Restriction of sleep can lead to serious consequences and diseases, but diseases itself can lead to sleep restriction, sleep problems like thyroid functions. Many of my patients in my GP office come to me and say, perhaps doctor, I'm sick because I don't get enough sleep. Is this true? Yes, it's going both directions. Of course, any, any change in the nervous system, psychiatric disorder, neurologic disorder, they do not sleep. So all of them go along with sleep disorder, but it can go vice versa, yes. And, and when do I need as a patient to see a doctor? Well, there's three major things. The first of all is, uh, is uh, snoring and apnea. And secondly, if you jump out of bed um, during nighttime, so if you have motor activity during sleep, then you should see a doctor. And the third one is non-restorative sleep. It's not problems falling asleep or maintaining sleep. This is not the major thing. We um, uh, look at the functions of sleep. So if you function well during the day, then everything is okay. But if you do not function well and you do not know why that is, then you should go, should go see a sleep doctor. And a sleep doctor is the right person to go to. It's not the GP. Uh, you're leading a, a sleep laboratory. So, so what kind of diagnosis well, are you doing? We do not have as many sleep doctors, so, so I cannot treat all of them. So you start out with a general practitioner, but if that doesn't help, then you may go to a psychiatrist. And if that doesn't help, then you should see really see a sleep doctor. And what's your personal opinion about taking sleeping pills? Well, first of all, it's good that we have them. Yeah. But on the other hand, we ought to get rid of them. Um, because they are not specific, um, they, they induce a state which is not really natural sleep. So most of them do not fulfill the functions of sleep. And so they have a hangover in the next morning. It's good that we have them, but we need more specific drugs. And are those in the pipeline of the researchers that we get more specific drugs? In the well, future? at least one specific drug is, is in the pipeline. And uh, we all hope that it's coming this year. And I do believe that's going to be fantastic. Oh, really? That's a specific drug and uh, which uh, probably will help in lots of patients. So we will look forward to that. And until then, what about home remedies like uh, lavender or valerian? Um, can I help with those kind of... Well, there's remedies? no specific scientific uh, proof that, uh, that you can say in general that it helps. But in some people it does help. And as long as it helps, take it. Okay, we got a lot of viewer questions. I mean, the topic of sleep affects nearly everybody. So we got a viewer question from Indonesia, Vid Jonovinata from Indonesia. She has taken sleeping pills for years and now she switched to meditation. And after she switched, 
Das Lieb ist fein. Can this be explained with meditation? Con continue with meditation. Continue. And are there any scientific uh, research that backs this up? I'm not aware of any of them. Okay, okay. Um, Raymond Chauvet from Andorra. Um, he often wakes up during the night and he says that that really doesn't bother him at all. He stays awake and then falls asleep again. And, and he just wants to know, does he need to be concerned? No, he doesn't need to be concerned. Sleep can individually be quite different. Some people just need four hours, others need 10 hours. And that is individually the most important thing. How do you feel during the day? So if the functions of sleep are fulfilled, don't bother and don't worry about any kind of change in sleep. So some people are uh, ex explaining a lack of sleep and other ones are sleeping too much. Margot Bachholz from Chile has a daughter and the daughter is 20, 21 years old and she's a bright student, she writes. And her daughter um, sleeps at least for 12 hours a night. During daytime, she's unimpaired. Over nighttime, she's sleeping for 12 hours. And Mrs. Bachholz now wants to know if adenoids in the nose channel of her daughter can be the cause of this um, yeah, prolonged sleep. Well, first thing, like I told before, if they are uh, doing fine during the day, it sounds okay. 12 hours sounds a lot. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, these, these, I don't know, it's, it could be a, a reason for longer sleep. So if people have something like 12 hours of sleep, you should see a sleep darker. And maybe the quality of your sleep is impaired and that's why you need that much sleep. When you could be much better off with eight hours sleep when you mm -hmm. change that. But I cannot tell you that just here. But so, it, it's so one, it's one, one uh, uh, possible solution. So Ms. Brachal's daughter should see an ENT doctor or a right. sleep specialist to check this out. One last question. Zhang Lu from China wants to know what kind of relaxation techniques you would recommend for falling asleep. Whatever helps there. But uh, relaxation in the evening is most important. Um, yeah. You should not do stressful things before you go to sleep and you should not discuss your life with your partner in the last five minutes before falling asleep. You need to calm down in any way. So put and yourself into a sleepy mode and then go to sleep. That's it. Thanks so much for being with us in the studio. Thank you. Thank you.